best run right there. Where's Aaron, man? <laughs> Where the fuck is Aaron? I like his professional countdown better. All right, here we go. Everybody, this is Ray Daniels, the culture referee. Hey, what's up? It's your girl Tamara, aka Girl from Harlem. And to, and this is the God Show. If you're in the room, you can clap. If you're in the room, you Castle. <laughs> he said everybody. So I call call him <laughs> niggas' name and shit. Castle, clap, motherfucker. Uh, and today, Tamara, we have a legend. Um, if Atlanta had people who I would say are our foundation of Atlanta as it is today, you know, you speak about L.A. Reeds, you speak about Jermaine Dupree's, and we also have to speak about Ian Burke. Uh, fun fact, Ian Burke was the first major meeting I've ever had in my career. No when way. I was coming up and I was trying to get a music business, I had a dope artist. Somebody was like, this girl named Ro was like, you need to meet Ian Burke. And I remember being nervous as hell when I met him. And he was just so, like, cool. Like, hey, man, whatever, whatever. this is what I want when we do this, da-da-da. And this is when he was running the ASCAP office. And, you know, this show is about giving people their credit. I hate the term flowers. And Ian Burke is someone who is a giant, probably the humblest giant in our city's history. And today, we're not going to let him be a giant. We gonna make him be the giant he is. We gonna pull the giant out of his <laughs> humble ass. We gonna make him be humble. So everybody, give it up for Ian Burke. Woo! Oh, like he don't even want the applause. He's like, Hold nah, man. Boys. So, yeah, so, so first nice. of all, brother, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. You know. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Feeling great. You still got feeling the stamina great. for this? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know, I do. you know, you got, you know, it's a stamina. People don't understand this business is about stamina. Yeah, and my clients are getting younger, so you know, and I, they want I, you to run as fast, and, exactly, and, and, and if not faster. Yeah, and they want, and especially, you know, when they when they start, you know, I, maybe about five years ago, I start hitting that unk. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh no, and I, when I, they call yeah. you unk, they um, trying you. They really trying to see if Unk can keep up. <laughs> they really trying to see it. what's up, Unk. They try to. That's right the way of saying if you can keep up, but they don't know you got the you got the stamina for this. Yeah. So, Ian, for people that don't know Ian Burke's story, tell us your story. Oh, wow. All right, well, I'm originally from Mount Vernon, New York. Ooh, Money on the Mount. Money on the Mount. so happy right now. Yeah. <laughs> really? I never, I never oh, get support. Oh, you're from Harlem. That's right. I'm, right. See, I never get support. So, I really love that even though you're from New York, he gave you credit for being, like, such a big impact on Atlanta. So, I'm excited to see how that happens. Okay, that's what's up. That's My right. father's from Harlem. Uh oh, you know. Greatness. So there it is. You know, we just got that in us. We Absolutely. Like that. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so um, born and raised, and uh, my parents decided to relocate to Florida uh, in their retirement age, and that wasn't a place that I wanted to be <laughs> necessarily. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I was hearing a lot of great things about Atlanta, um, and that was right next door to Florida. So I was like, all right, let me, let me give it a About what age were you? I was 18 going on 19. Okay. This was a year after I graduated high school. So it was in uh, 1984. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I, I, I got down here studying computers. I started off at DeVar, and I was studying computers. And, um, you know, uh, a gentleman in my class, Arthur Brown, was playing bass in this local band, Friends Inc. And um, he invited me to help move equipment for the band. Uh, they were opening up for Hal Melvin and the Blue Notes. If you don't, I'm sorry. There you go. Not I said uh, that's for Tamira. I know Tamira don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know she don't know. I gotta fuck with her. So um, at Mr. Oh, V's Figure Eight, that was a real popular club back in the day, and um, you know I went and helped them move equipment, set up the stage, and all of that. And you know backstage, um, in the house was Floyd, not Floyd. I'm sorry, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah. Was in the house, right? And Sugar Ray Leonard is the was the Floyd Mayweather of that time. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's like the boxing icon. Yes. And so when I got to meet him backstage and everything like that, I was just that that whole moment sort of shifted where I wanted to go. Mm hmm And that's what uh turned me to music. You so know? you said that one of the things that you started with was like just literally just being in a room and moving equipment. Yeah, so that's what I was a roadie. Yeah, that the importance of kind of starting from the bottom and why like 
everybody's journey. It always looks like overnight success, but it's never that. Nah. So the importance of just starting out, just moving equipment and then working your way up. Um, that, for me, it was just being in the element for me. You know what I'm saying? Moving equipment and, and you know, going to shows and uh, watching the performances and watching how the people love the actual performances. So um, it was it was just being in that element. And I went from, you know, moving equipment to uh, working the soundboard. By this time, I had dropped out and went to the Art Institute. They had a commercial music program uh, at the Art Institute that I attended. And um, I started learning about sound, mixing consoles and stuff like that. So I, I went from moving equipment to running sounds to doing lights to eventually booking the bands that I was working with to uh, start a career in actually management. And, and that's how I grew. So when you started, can you just give us a list of Atlanta talent that you had your hand in whether it was discovering, whether it was helping them get situated with the situation. Because I want people to know who you are. Okay. So it, it started off with Arrested Development. They were my very first. Um, Arrested Development led me to create the band you know as TLC. I okay. called them Second Nature. Uh, that relationship with them led me, well, I was already connected with... Uh, Jermaine Dupree. Mm -hmm. So Jermaine, you know, offered to produce my new group if I helped him with his new group. Which was? Criss Cross. Oh. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And from there, you know, I went on to, uh, uh, well, Rico Wade from One Third of Organized Noise uh, helped me put together TLC. He he brought in Lisa he, he Left Eye. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, he knew t Boz and he knew Left Eye. So he helped me put them together. So. Uh -huh. Rico was very well aware of my background and everything like that. So when they started the whole production thing, when they started Organized Noise Production, and they needed uh, someone to help maintain and keep their situation organized, no pun intended, and uh, they brought me in. So I started working with Organized Noise. And when they Noise. brought you in, what was your role? like As a manager. Okay, so you was the manager of? The production the company. Production co okay, yes, cool. yes. Um, cause, and cause this is, I ask you that because when I was coming up, people really didn't know how to describe what you were. Right. You was just kind of like the, 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 the vessel that everyone kind of had to, it was almost like a rite of passage. If you want to be in the game in Atlanta, you had to go sit with Ian and, and I didn't even know what you, cause when I met you, you was at running ASCAP office. Yeah, yes. So it was still like, you was still like, that's why I wanted to know what your role this, was. This is, I was still growing. Let me, yeah. let me, let me say that. I was still growing. Rico recognized what I was trying to do, and he came in and said, all right, you know what? You're going to represent what this is. But mm. make no mistake, you know what I'm saying? Rico was our leader yes. of the dungeon sure. family. You know, I moved into the dungeon, you know, so I was staying there, much to the chagrin of uh, Rico's mom. Because yeah. I was the oldest, you yeah. know, I was yeah. uh, a bunch of, with all these teenagers, yeah. and, you know, here's yeah. this. <laughs> Grown man, twenty four year yeah. old man. Yeah. It's like, yo, what's going on? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Why is he sleeping on my yeah, couch? Exactly. I got two daughters exactly. back here. What's mm, going on? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So, but um, we all had respect for for Rico's sisters, and Rico trusted me yes. enough to be like, all right, you know, you you're gonna you're gonna be yeah. the figurehead for this. Yeah. But you know, you know, and I'll, I'm always honest about this. Like Rico really pulled the strings. It's like, yeah. okay. What, what do you want, Don Rico? And, and, and you know, that you put me in the position to execute what he needed to have done. And he gotcha. trusted me to do that. You know, gotcha. all, all of them trusted me to do that, actually. Mm -hmm. Ray and Sleepy actually trusted me to do that. And that was my role. I'm going to ask you, can I, Tamara? Well, I know Tamara used the leads, but I just want to ask you because I know you. I, it's kind of a yes or no question. And mm -hmm. I know he's humble. He might yeah. want to be honest. Do you feel like with your resume, you should be running one of these major labels right now. Yes. I say yes. I feel like I can do I, it. And I no, I, I know you should. Right. What would be your first order of business? Like you go mm, in there, what are you doing? Oh, first, first thing I'm doing, like because I am a little seasoned in this oh. business, I would bring on a group of young people who knew what they would do. I bring on a group of young me's. Because mm. the one thing I'm not afraid of, I'm not afraid of people being better than me. Yes. Oh, you understand yes. what I'm saying? 
I'm not, uh, I'm not afraid of that. I'm not afraid of not being the smartest person in the room. Because if I am the smartest person in the room, exactly. I'm in the wrong room. Yep. You understand what I'm saying? So Absolutely. I want people that know the game, know the business as it is today. Mm. To, to, you know, I know how to structure. I know how to organize. You know, but that doesn't mean that I'm proficient in social media. That's where that experience comes in. Yes, exactly. Experience. I got right. the experience. So I can say, okay, do this. This is what we need to do with your talent. And let's put it together and make it work. You know mm. what I'm saying? So that's, yeah, that would be my first thought of this. Oh, that made mm. me so excited. Because one of the questions I wanted to ask you, because you mentioned it earlier, and that's what I want to know. So you, you said age, right? That's the big thing now. You have a big age group. A age gap with the people you're signing now, the artists that you're signing. Mm -hmm. So do you ever feel like um, these people are kind of like, what do you know about the industry now? And how do you stay up to date on everything that's going on in the industry? Like the importance of social media, going on podcasts now, things like that. Uh, you know, I just pay attention. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I pay attention to what's going on. You know, and, and I, I, I learn. I don't know it all, but I learned. You know what I'm saying? I knew I said, okay. Social media, especially Instagram, for me, is more important. So I went to work on trying to figure out what I needed to do on this platform to help my, my situation grow. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, you know, I'm a non-celebrity, and um, uh, I have 11,000 followers on Instagram. Genuine yeah. followers. Yeah. I never bought any sure. of them. You understand sure. what I'm saying? And, um, you know, like, for me, that's good. You know, so... Most of like I, I manage to uh, keep saying two. I manage a pair of twins, a set of twins um, that were on the TV show Queens, mm -hmm. uh, and I manage them because I used to manage their moms when she was eighteen. Oh, that's so cute. So when the kids got on the show, she was like, "I gotta get you to Ian Body. He's the only person that I trust." Yes, you know what I'm saying. So she's like, "When we ran into, so I got these kids. They're on the show. Mm -hmm. I want you to manage them." I want to ask you a question. Uh, well, the first part is, do you, how do you still, after all your experiences, great, good, and bad, and ugly, how do you still have the passion to manage? I, I, you know what? I don't. I, was, I don't. <laughs> I, 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 I will, do but I don't have the passion. I do. My, my clients now, I have the twins. I have a seven-year-old agricultural farmer, the youngest f certified farmer mm -hmm. in the state of Georgia. Her name is Kendall Ray Johnson. Um, and I have a few other young, uh, I have a young kid named King Moore. They're all young kids, and their uh, parents are people who know me, who knew me coming up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and they have that trust factor, and they're like, okay, well, cool. And that's, I, I don't have to work as hard. Yeah. With this situation, mm. you know, I just have to use whatever little influences I have, make phone calls and make some things happen for them. Next question. Ian today has the chance to go back to Ian in 1991. Huh? <laughs> what do you tell that Ian? <laughs> and mind you, let's be clear. It could be 10 things. I want to hear it all. <laughs> what do you, you sitting down with Ian from 1991? What are you saying to him right now? 1991. Yep. I'd have to go back to 1990. Okay. 1990. Um, basically trust your instincts. Okay. And, and, and this might sound a little kind of crazy, but don't be so nice. No, I, no don't, don't, I, don't be so people nice. People say that more often than you think like, People regret kind of like, you know, giving themselves too much. Could I, could, could, I, could I say something? I was hoping you said that because I thought you was going to say, take care of Ian. Because mm -hmm. I feel like in this selfless business we in, it's almost frowned upon to like put your agenda first. And, but I had to learn that. But I had to learn that years later. Exactly. And you're absolutely right. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, you're so caught up in making sure that everybody else is cool that you put yourself last. And then you then you realize there's nothing left. There's for nothing. Yourself. There's there's nothing left. And not only that, the selfish people who come out in this world and who come out and and I know you know, we all know. Whoever's been in this game knows there are people who haven't put in none of the work. Mm -hmm. But because they came in at the opportune time 
and said the right thing. Not right. even did the right thing. Right. Said the right thing. Ian is only getting you what? I can get you $10 million. Just because they said that, they came out on top. Mind you, it didn't work out for them long term because they was fuck people. Right. But because they said that, the artists then started doubting themselves, doubting you, and feeling like there's something missing. And, and that's the, that unfortunately is the thing. They don't, at that point, they don't understand that I'm down regardless. At the end of the day, no matter what happens, I'm down because I'm here when you ain't got nothing. nothing. I'm helping you create that element. So I'm going to rock with you. Yeah. People don't understand that when other folks come in after the work is done, that they can come in, use you to your fullest potential, but when you're done, it's like, all right, see you later. I'm moving on over here. I'm, I'm, I'm working with this I'm artist I'm sorry, now. by the way. Sorry that I'm going over there with this guy. Right, right. I love you. You're a great person, but this guy is how They're going to they're gonna pick opportunities Absolutely. over loyalty and everything else. A and that's the thing. And, and that was my biggest flaw. Like, I was that nice guy that was like, all right, you know what? I want to make sure mm -hmm. that you guys get what you deserve. That you know what like I'm saying? That is horrifying to hear. Like every time a manager comes in or some one of you guys come and tell the stories, it's like heartbreaking to hear. Like that you have to deal with that. Like I couldn't. I would once the first artist does that to me, I probably would never manage people again. So how do you even find the courage to push through it and keep, like Ray say, even find a passion to still manage after? Because I'm a goat. Mm, that's I know that I know that. Cause right. I'm a goat. That's what that's what Braxton should drop a bomb on the show right there. Like, you that's know what I'm saying? And I'm just being honest. Like I He's listen, I did it once. Yep. You know, it's like a person who writes a great record and don't want nobody else to record it. It's just for me. Yep. It's just for me. Instead of letting Beyonce record it, blow it up, and you get a ton of money, and you go write another great record. Yep. I knew that I'd be able to find something else because that was within me. So. It wasn't necessarily that big of a sacrifice. It's like, all right, you guys, go ahead. You go, hopefully, you go and do your thing. I'm going to go out here and find the next. And that has been my career trajectory from th that point up until now. Damn. I ain't going to lie, man. You are, I, I'm glad you said you was go. I think you should say that more. Every day in the because, morning. Because, <laughs> because let me tell you why. Because the, the messed up part about this game is people don't respect you the way you think they should, mm -hmm. they respect you the way that you make them respect you. Right. Because there have been times where there are people, and I know you've witnessed this, where, and she knows, Tamir knows this, where it's people where you might, like say if you got a homie in, and you know he hates that guy. Mm -hmm. Like I hate such and such. But such and such came with some business. So now he's lining up with such and such. Mm -hmm. they, that, that tells you that opportunities override hate. Opportunity overrides love. People are gonna always go for themselves, and and that's but see, but you if you really think about it, like it's 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 a business. It's a business. I don't have to be your friend. Yes, to do business with you. If we're gonna make money, let's go ahead and make money. We ain't going over each other's house. Yep. We we ain't celebrating Christmas or holidays together, you know. But we getting this. But the white folks do it all the time. Yeah. They put they, they they they. But we're taught family loyalty love and the people that follow by those rules always end up in the back always so wait, what are white people doing differently than us they they get to get they don't have to like each other like i heard i don't know this for yeah, a fact because I, I wasn't that. in that clique but i heard katzenberger geffen and spielberg weren't the best of friends Mm. You know, but they got together and created DreamWorks, DreamWorks. and got that damn got, check. And made billions of dollars. <laughs> made, you, you know what yeah. I'm saying. So they, they don't have to, you, you know, I ain't got to be your friend. Let's go ahead and get this money, though. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And I feel that that's the, that's the way. Now, you know, as long as you're doing it legally, legitly, and, and you're doing it properly, I'm all for that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I have a question for both of y'all now. It kind of inspired <laughs> something in me. So, like, who were two artists that kind of had beef? that you wish would have came together and could have created something like really, really dope? Mm. I know Ray gonna hit me with something. I, I already know the answer of. for me. It's, 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 it's big and Tupac, but it's only because they were friends before they made it, before yeah. they started beefing. Yeah. And not only that, the... I feel like somebody has one in the archives. No, 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 no. They got, they was friends. Like right. Biggie, like two, Biggie used to let, two, two parties let Biggie sleep on his couch. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, is that we are, we are, 
we don't have no, enough lineage, our culture. I think we're just getting there. Mm -hmm. But we have lineage and we have history. You know, like, I know this happened to you. I know this, this for me happens. Like, at this point in my life, there's nobody who's been in my life since I was a kid that I can call on for advice. Now, don't get me wrong. They can give me advice like, hey, you know, but I'm talking about, like, advice when you're like, okay, I feel like I've made it to this plateau. And now he get to another level, right? Right. I don't have nobody. Everybody around me worked a nine to five or hustled mm -hmm. until, they, until they got caught doing whatever they was doing. So we don't have enough lineage where there was somebody, there was an Ian that Ian could have called that would have said, yo, Ian, chill. And, and, and that's the ad that there was no one. And because the, the business was fresh mm -hmm. when I was coming in here. Like, the business started... You know, because of the Jack the Rapper convention, it was coming here every summer. Um, but there wasn't anybody here to really regulate what was going on. No one that I could call and be like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I got this is going on. I got this. I, I had to learn by experiences all across the board. Exactly. So, then, so that means you really paid. Shit, you walked so I could run. Right. That's why I, my door is always open. I don't want anybody tell me, Ian, call. What do you need? Cause shit, my door was and always I, that's, open. That's the one thing I could say, boy. I could uh, two people. What well, is more than two? But um, two people that I can name right now that that always, regardless of their positions, uh, always took my phone calls and always made time for me in meetings. Ray and Shakir Stewart. Wow, that's a good company to be. You know I what I'm saying? Shakir. Shakir was vice yeah. president of Def Jam. He still always... Yo, come up to the office. What you got, Ian? What you need? What you need? You know what I'm saying? That always meant everything to me. That shit everything. Is, we need more of that, man, because I know that. I got a call from a friend last week. I'm not going to say his name, but, you know, he called me like... And, and we cool. We ain't like... I won't hang out, but we cool. And he was like, yo, come see me right now. Like, because we... And I want to go see him. I ain't going to lie, Ian. I walked in the house, and, and he looked like he was ready to kill himself. And no bullshit. Successful music exec. And he was like, now why do people hate me? And he was like, man, like what I'm doing wrong? And that shit almost made me want to cry because I understand that. that the, the, I didn't give the game power. And that would be my only advice to you. Don't give this game power. You got it already. But see, that's what I did in the beginning when I tried to start a resurgent. My whole thing was like, yo, I'm blackball. Yeah. Why can I not get a job in this industry? Everybody knows I'm qualified. Everybody knows what you've done. Everybody knows what I've done. Like, and I just didn't get it. It's like, yo, it really felt like I was blackballed. I ain't gonna lie to you. 2022, I felt blackballed. No bullshit. And I, I kind of feel, I kind of feel the only thing that got me from feeling blackballed was getting in front of a microphone and talking. Right. Because. I I I watch somebody like yourself, and it, it, Atlanta is a very lonely place. It's a loving place, but it's a lonely place mm -hmm. because in LA or New York, you can fall into an opportunity just because that's where the home bases are, and right. like, and nobody wants to cut somebody a check that they can't watch. Right, you know that, right? So for me, I felt that. So that's you can't watch. Yeah, like like pay basically, like basically, I'm not gonna pay in half a million a year. And, if, I can't and I can't, I can't see Ian every day. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Right. They want to watch you. Mm -hmm. So for me, I felt that. That's why I was so compelled to like sit with you because I know it. And when my friend and my friend who called me, who was in tears, who was basically like, I mean, like, I'm looking at this dude, and I'm like looking around, I'm like, bro, look at how you living. Mm -hmm. Look at the plaques on the wall, bro. And he's like, Yeah, but nobody likes me. And I was like, here's the crazy part. If you had something hot right now, it wouldn't matter how they felt. Yep. Gotcha. Sure so with that being said. Fuck them. Fuck how they feel. Fuck what they're thinking because they're going to laugh at you regardless. Mm -hmm. Go for yours. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the season that I've been in. So I always tell people, I don't feel like I'm in the music business. Even though I conduct myself in the... I don't feel like I'm in it. And one, once I took that away from me, I didn't get mad when someone didn't answer my phone call. Right. Because it was like, I ain't, I ain't one of y'all. Mm -hmm. I, I told myself I'm not that. And I think with you, you have the power... The hard part is, is it's almost like, it's almost like I, I live in movies. It's like Gladiator. Uh, you watch Gladiator? You know? Absolutely. Okay, so you know I'm a movie fanatic. Right. Samira knows this about me. But Gladiator, Russell Crowe is a gladiator, but the guy who bought him and made him a slave was like, I know how it feels to be what you want to be. Right, right. If you, he, he was like, the mistake I made was that I didn't worry about the people. 
And he's like, entertain the people. Entertain. That's why yep. that's why Russell Crowe has a famous line. Are you, are you not, not entertained? entertained? Are you not entertained? This is why you were here? Mm -hmm. And then the people start screaming his name. So I started looking at myself like, I'm the gladiator. Like, I'm Russell Crowe. Like, I'm going to come in the ring, and I'm going to bust anybody ass you put in my face. And I'm not going to play by the rules. Mm -hmm. You tell me to kill him, I'm not going to kill him just because you. Because in that case, I'm playing into the same system. Right. And we are agents of change. So for me with you, I just, my only thing to you is fuck everybody. No, I fuck every Fuck them all. And whoever don't answer, they ain't with you. That's it. And remember that shit. It's a documentary on Frank Sinatra with Sinatra. This is Sinatra, bro. This is fucking Frank. Mm -hmm. And he had a cold spell. That's another thing I think that we don't factor in is that there will be peaks and valleys in everything that we do. And I think that the valleys feel longer. Six months, like fuck. Six months is not a real long time out of right, your life. Right. One year is not a real long time out of your life. But when you have to live every second, every minute, every hour, <laughs> it feels it, like it, an it, eternity. Minute, you just really just want that moment, right? Where somebody comes and be like, "Hey, I see you. How can I help?" You know what I mean? And you don't get that. So for me, you know, I just I know how that shit feels, bro. And I mean, I'm just glad. By the way, you can come sit on the couch at any time. Mm -hmm. You I appreciate have, you, that. You don't even have to hit. You could just come sit on the couch because I know what you meant. I know what you still mean. And I know that someone like you has to win. Because if, if the good guy don't win, then that means everybody going to want to no, be bad. No hope. Because the only people no that seem like they're winning are the bad people, right? Right. And that's really, what the, that's really what my mission is. Let me show you that. I can, let me show you that a good guy can win being a good guy. Mm -hmm. So I start focusing on my industry and I start focusing on the people and then shit start. And then now start when I go places, up. people in the industry like, Ray, come see me. <laughs> really? I didn't, I didn't even, change. come on. Tamir knows this show is going to be called Combos with the Gods. Mm -hmm. It's written on my board right now, Ray. Combos with the Gods. I called it the God Show and I told my team, I was like, I don't know if anybody's going to show up for me. Wow. So that's why it's called the God Show. Because I can't guarantee. Because if I call it combos with the gods, I'm at the mercy of someone showing up, and I don't believe somebody's gonna show up for me. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm. I want you to know I'm not giving you. I'm giving you every. I'm giving you my heart because I want you to know that I felt what you felt. But nigga, we celebrate you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I think this the conversation is important because people need to know it's not all glitz and glamour, and that there are moments that we all go through. So. For both of you guys, why do you keep loving a game that kind of seems like it's not always loving you back? It, it's it's a uh, great question. It's it's a the the thing about what everybody asks me is like you know who are you, who's your favorite artist that you worked with uh, you know so forth and so on. It, it's watching something grow that you were involved in, mm -hmm. right, and seeing it become something that you would have never imagined, mm -hmm. like when. TLC now, again, is the biggest selling female because of their recent certifications. They're, again, known as the biggest selling female group of all I went time. to the female tour. Let me not say that. Well, so yeah, I was backstage. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, I was there. I was Ian right there. Ian was there before New Face was there, by the way. Ian was there before, before New, New Face was there. Was I there, love Ian that. Was there. <laughs> so, um, you know, and uh, I, I tell everybody, like, one of, one of my proudest moments ever was being in the audience at the Grammys when Outkast won the album of the year, the highest honor of the there. night. I was sitting right there. I, that was the year that J-Lo wore that dress, and I was right really? next to J-Lo on the red carpet looking at that dress in person. In person. In person. Wow. Live action. Wow. Don't you wish you had a camera phone Whoa, like that? what? <laughs> Imagine how much for that. I probably would have got what? kicked off the carpet. <laughs> what? You know, but that's like watching your kids graduate Summa cum laude from a, a, a high HBCU college. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's, that's what it is. It's just watching something. And that's part, that helps grow your legacy. Yes, that is your legacy, by the way. Yeah. Oh, that's, don't worry about it. It's okay. You know what You're I'm saying? Right. Like, do what you want to do. <laughs> and, I, and I put it on silent like I did last time. No, it's okay. Brother, we can do what you want to do. graduate magna cum laude. No, I, 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 my, to answer your question, <laughs> Tamir, my answer is I'm, I'm dope as fuck at it. I know that's fine. And for me, it's like, why do I stay in it? Because I watch people who I know are not as dope as me get to places, and the only reason why they got there is because they stayed with it. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's like, they that's stuck why with I, it. Yeah, like, that's why I stay with it no matter. Like, I'm tired as hell today. 
But we filming, we filming. I'm in it. I don't care. I'm going to wake up and I'm going to do the job. And that's why I'm still in it. But I hate it. I, but I, I hate it for why, for what it does to good people. Mm. I hate it for how it has destroyed people's lives, legacies, and everything. And I hate that they there are people who are powerful enough that can erase you out of history. Mm-hmm. I mean, Stop. like not, that, that. But that was one of my fears, and I was like, I had, I, I was like, I'm not going to allow that to happen. Yeah, that. take back. That's why you I, know that's what I'm why saying. I did this, yeah, because you know, I know for a fact. I ain't gonna say his name, but it's if I, when I say who it is, you gonna know who I'm talking about. There was a guy who signed a huge artist from Atlanta, and they made a movie on the artist, and he wasn't mentioned in the movie. They erased him from history, mm-hmm. and. Man, he's still here, by the way. But there's no way in the world that he should have been erased from that book, from that movie. Okay. And that's that, that almost happened to me. Thank, 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 thank God t Boz stood up for it. Yeah, cause, mm. and JD, like t Boz, like they, Candy, it's people that stand by you. Right. Like Ian Burke, I'm standing by him. Right. You need to use that. Oh, and I, <laughs> trust me, I do. Why does stuff I like do. that happen? Why is there even this want to remove certain people from history? Um, because it doesn't fit within their story, the mm-hmm. story that they want to tell. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if it doesn't fit, it must be cut. And if you sit there and you allow it to happen, then that's what's going to happen. I, and I, I wasn't, no way, there was just no way. That that was going to happen. And by the way, this God show is called the God show. It's an acronym for Ghosts and Underdogs. So we acknowledging goats and the underdogs. And, underdogs. and you're both. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Because you literally have been a part of historic shit. But it's the underdog part was that you was nice and somebody else came in and said, well, I'll just take the credit. Well, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Let, let me let take hang it, out with step them. my name on credit. it. Yeah, I'm going to put my name on this. You know what I'm saying? So You came out like, well, you were in the mix of all the good female R&B groups, like, so right. I got to ask you, who is, like, the best female R&B group from the 90s? Escape. Oh, you answered that way. You, Yo, let me, t- let me, hold on. Uh, okay. Let, listen, Let's go. Listen, I, listen. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to ask a call. Hold on, hold, <laughs> hold, hold <laughs> up. Just, hold on. I just, right. because it, hold on. You do know. I want to know why you said escape. Okay. But I also need to know specifically why you said escape over TLC. Well, no, because I consider TLC a pop group. Okay. I Probably consider P- uh, uh, TLC a pop group. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay, perfect. So R&B group, escape. Escape. Uh, when you say R&B, that's the only distinguishing yeah. thing that I said. I love with that. that. You know what I'm saying? So, man, that's a smart man. That's a smart man right there. Uh, hey, bro, he that. Like, hey, <laughs> so, so, oh, yeah, so, there was that one R&B. Okay, that's easy. Okay, that's yeah. easy. Uh, Keyword there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, escape. Escape, like you know, What's I. Your I, favorite I, escape song. Um, tonight. Tonight. Mm-hmm. Oh. Because they sing in it a cappella. I had them sing that song. Marquez Etheridge, who wrote Waterfalls, wrote Tonight. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. You know, they always made it feel like he wrote one hit and left it. No, uh uh-uh. uh. Marquez wrote a lot of hits. Yeah. Ra- Marquez Etheridge wrote uh, Blackberry Molasses Black. for Mr. No. Yeah, we need, that we man need, is we need super Ian talented to, we need on Ian the pen. to be the orator. Of the God Show, <laughs> we need to be able to go. We need to have Ian sit right there at every show and be like, "Let's run to Ian. Ian, give us the facts. <laughs> say, give us the facts on that right there." I'm suggesting that Don Vito. We need the Ian on there, Jack Dance. We need Ian as our orator of the show. Period. No, I'm just, it's, it's, I'm just stating facts. So, Escape Tonight. So, let me ask you, uh, what was it about? I, this is, man, I just would love to do this with you. Tell me, what was it about Escape? that made you say, this is it, before the world said, what did you see in Escape? And then I want you to give me what you saw in TLC. And then I, I just, I want you to tell the world, because a lot of people, can I just tell you a story? Sure. This is a true story, Tamira. So when I came up in the business, I wanted to work for L.A. Reid. I had to. It was like rite of passage. You mm-hmm. know, uh-huh. if you feel great from Atlanta, you need to be a part of that man's family tree. It's just a way. So I was trying to sign a girl group. I hope nobody gets mad at me, y'all, because oh, I was I learning you. my lesson. I want to make this known. Don't <laughs> chili, do not come after me. 
Tion, do not come after me. Y'all are my girls. Y'all know I love y'all. But I'm trying to sign a girl group. And L.A. Reed is like, they ain't it. So I'm like, you know, I'm a young, hungry executive. I'm like, you crazy. Mm-hmm. He's like, Ray, they can't sing. Mm-hmm. And my, t- I said, TLC can't sing. <laughs> I said this, this man in a room full of executives said, it was like the room stopped. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck you say? This LA. <laughs> what the fuck you say, Ray? I said, no, no, I'm saying they could they could sing. You're trying to clean it up. No, no, because it wasn't that I just said it, it wasn't that anything they could sing. It was, I didn't think they were, I didn't think they were Coco and SWV. That's vocalist, what I meant. Strong vocalist. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I didn't think they were in vogue, right? I don't think anybody loved TLC because of their vocals. Mm-hmm. That's what I was just trying to say. Mm-hmm. They had hits. This was my interpretation at that moment. And LA Reed said. He was like, don't you ever fucking disrespect TLC like that. <laughs> yes, and then you that. know what he says to me? But this is why I love working for L.A. Because he didn't say that and drop it there. He said, have you ever heard a voice like T-Boss? Right. I was like, nah. He said, that's why it works. Please. Because the, the TLC had a voice. Outside of what they represented, they had a voice. Right, right. That was, you couldn't duplicate. Mm-hmm. And that's why. TLC was the biggest group in the world. This is what he tells me. So I'm asking you, and I'm only doing that because that's why LA is still in power, because he understood how to codify. Right, so yeah. I'm asking you, what did you see? What I saw in Escape, we'll start with Escape first, was was uh, four women, and Tiny wasn't part of Escape at, yeah. at this particular time when I first met him. Uh, four women that could sing uh, as good as the guys, as good as the fellas. Acapella. Because when the first song that they sang for me, which was uh, also made it on the debut album, was Is was My Living in Vain. And I'm sitting there and I'm just like, oh my God. So it was the voices. It was the voices. So the vo- was, it, was it any voice? Was it the combination of the voice? It, it, was, it was the harmonies within the voices. It was the themselves. fact that they could sing four girls yep. together. Four girl, four part harmony and, and could do it as crisp as the guys could do it. J- Jermaine Dupri said, TLC Escape is the best vocal female R&B group of all, of, I, I don't want to say all time, I don't know, I want to misquote, but he said, no female group could sing better than TS, I mean, the Escape. Would you agree with that? Uh, now, I said they were my favorite. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I look, I, In Vogue, it was pretty nasty too. You know what I'm saying? In Vogue was pretty Shout nasty. Sylvia Rome. I love Sylvia, she signed in Vogue. You oh, know, uh, see, the, how you felt about L.A. Reid, yeah. wanting to work with L.A. Reid, yeah. that was my thing with Sylvia? Sylvia. Oh, hell yeah. Have you ever worked with her? Yeah, she okay. hired me. Oh, she hired say, me as the A&R know, director. My, no, that's like, mo- that's like mom. Like, and then, you know, they both came at the same time, and, and L.A. didn't have a chance because I was just like, oh, my God, I've always wanted to work with this woman because she signed in Vogue. <laughs> she had in Vogue. Bro. That's why I love you, bro. Like, I just love that purest in you. Right, right, right. TLC. TLC, now see, and the, the funny thing about it too, I have said on occasion that I didn't sign TLC for their vocals. I didn't put them together for their vocal abilities. It wasn't that. When I met t Boz, when I met her at 2 o'clock in the morning, Rico Wade took me to her house at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I knocked on that girl's door. I, she had the swag. She was waking up. And I was just like, you're in the group. You don't even have to sing. Mm. You are in and the this group. this was T-Boss. This was T-Boss. Bro, can I tell you something? I was just, what was we at? We was just somewhere. And no, I was at the house Sunday. And I was saying, I don't think there's ever been a female R&B artist, maybe Aaliyah, okay. maybe Aaliyah, mm-hmm. that had more sauce and T-Boss. And, and, and Tamir, Tamir, go watch Baby, Baby, Baby video. Look how she cut. You know, oh my love. Like, she I, was so. Yo, I agree with you. She was that. T-Boss is that but bitch. The, the, yeah, the, the she is. That, what are we in? The millennial, this yeah. one, would be Tiana. Yep, you, yeah. Tiana is on that level. Got mad swag. Just, it's just like, like it oozes out of yeah. you. Right. Like, T-Boss. T- oh, Bob, we agreed on oh, something. Oh, nah, nah, bro. Let me tell you something. Yeah, I was going to take that Sauce, nah, sauce <laughs> is something that you can't duplicate. You you really can't. Bruh, anybody you know, anybody watching this, if you are a young girl that want to be an artist and you're watching this, go watch Baby, Baby, Baby video. Go watch any early TLC video. 
Chili was the beautiful one, the the one that was just beautiful, and Left Eye was the crazy one. It was one. a crazy one, yeah. But crazy, go sexy, cool, watch T Boz. That motherfucker but had about it, all the sauce. TLC was a group. My aunts, my older, and I could enjoy too. So they had the sexy music for them, the grown music for them, red light special. But mm-hmm. then they had what about your friends? Like it, it, it crossed over between two generations. It was yeah. like a melting between two generations. Like there was, Grace there was now growth. We get that, yeah, but it was growth between it was the two music albums. For both of us. Absolutely. So I listen to it with my aunt to not feel like I had to go listen to like Britney Spears or something <laughs> while they were listening to something else. That right. was good for two genres, and I think that was a big pretty unique thing for them as well yeah so so give me some other acts that you saw coming up that you were like they had it oh like and i want to know because 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 let me tell you why Ian. there there are there are people right now watching this there are kids that want to be in this game i have aspiring people in this bit in this office right now and i want them to know that it's not that they're not seen it's that they just ain't got the sauce yet you can get the sauce tomorrow. Right. But you know what I'm saying? Because that's another thing. People take people get mad when you feel they don't have it. Just because you don't have it today don't mean you can't you don't have it tomorrow. You just don't have it today, so you need to work at it today. Yeah, you have to work hard. So you so it. tell me some acts you've seen on your rise that My, you was like, I knew they was gonna make it and why. Soleil. Soleil, I feel like would have been much bigger if she really focused on being an artist. Soleil was a family person. What was she? Oh, she. What was she focused on? She was focused on family. And, and this is after she got with Genuine, and they became. No, this was even before that. You know what I'm saying? This so was she, even before that. Like she, she worked hard at being an artist for for a time period when we did the Who That with JT yeah. Money, and she did her debut album. We got the deal. The album went gold. You know what I'm saying? And then just things started. Distractions. Shifting, Distractions. yeah, exactly. Gotcha. So I, I felt like, you know, this wasn't really where she wanted to be. Now Soleil's in a more spiritual place with her yeah. music and everything like that. And she's exactly where she wants to be, Yeah, you know, as it relates to balancing her family life and her music. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? But Soleil was another one that when she walked into the room, all heads turned. Mm. It's just like, oh. You know, what was ooh. it about her? It, was, it, was it a sauce? Was it her beauty? Like, what was it was a combination. That? It was definitely okay. the combination. She definitely had that swag. You call it sauce, I call it swag. But, but she was very beautiful as well. You Got know. You. you know. Wait, hold on. I don't. I don't agree with you on something. Tell me. And like, with, I've been over who? here arguing or with, me? with Ray. Oh, in well, my with brain Ray. About okay. This. If you don't have it in you, I don't think you can. Like, somebody can give you the sauce. Like, okay, you so got to be born with it. I'm gonna give you an example. Rihanna. Rihanna was always breathtaking. No, hit me, hit me out, room. hit me out. But Rihanna didn't become oh, that, that bitch star. until she cut her hair. Because when she cut her hair, that's when she became iconic. She, am I, dog, tell me, am I wrong? She, Mr. DJ, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, I'm, no, I'm looking because I want to see because I was th- listen. I was on your side. When you brought that up. You were with me, right? But when that is. That is a good little point. It, it is. I because get, get, at the get, end of the day, nobody really was checking for Rihanna in the very beginning. Outside of, the, outside of music. Yeah, but for right. her to pull that no, off, no, she he, had to have no, that No, 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 no. But I'm her. saying, though. But I'm saying, though. I'll give you another example. Future. Hit me out. When Future was Future with the baseball cap to the front with the bun, dreads in the back. He was... That nigga, this is future, same damn time future. This okay. is, uh, I go to the moon, this is that future. But when he put that fedora on and put <laughs> them blonde tips, he was iconic. Right. That's what I mean by you, like, and in, in, in over history, you could, I can give you every lesson. Biggie, Biggie was that nigga, rap-wise, when he's rapping party, and but remember, he got the twist, the bandana on, the dark clothes. Bitches want to run through, no the shit, Biggie. Like, he was, we, we fucked with him. But when he put that Kango on and that Kooji sweater on, and he was like, I love it when you call me Big Papa. The Iconic. Okay, so, but, you, you but, just yeah. You got to look the match. No, but, yeah. that, but that's, but that's, my, but that's my point, though. But here's my thing. I believe, and Ian, I want your opinion. Like okay. I said, by the way, side. Ian's team, <laughs> I'm, be, I'm dead serious when I'm saying, Ian could be a part of this as much as he wants. Okay, cool. But here's what I'm saying. Hear me out, Ian. I feel like uh, uh, if you, if you, I lost my chain of thought, but, but 
What were we talking? No, what were we, we were talking, talking about having how I was winning uh, the debate about yeah the, having the swag, it, having <laughs> the swag within you. No, no, okay, cool. But my thing is this: is that I believe that any person at any given time can become that motherfucker. I just thought I think that you ha- it's something innate within you that already there. It has to be there. I, and I believe, and what I'm saying, okay, so hear me out, Tamir. I believe that. I like this conversation, by the way. I like this. I believe that God has given all of us a gift. And I believe that all of us are gifted, but the people who honor the gift and find a way to enhance their gifts, if you will, are the people who get to the top. There are people who are gifted who are mad that people don't spot their gifts, who are like, I'm the shit. Why ain't nobody noticing me? Right, right, right. Maybe you got the wrong hairstyle. Maybe you wear the wrong clothes. Maybe you become, maybe you're, maybe you're, I'll give you an example. My Virgo brother, Titty Boy. You know the difference between Titty Boy and 2 Chains? It's one difference. Titty Boy was always angry. And 2 Chains, and 2 Chains smiled. Mm. And you would see Titty Boy out, and 2 Chains, and, 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 and Tit had a, he had a, a, a aura about himself. Like, it was like, he was angry. And I ain't never talked to him about this. But I remember, oh, he from College Park. I want to see him win. Mm. I remember sitting with Jeff and Shaka being like, yo, why he don't smile, though? He always look mad. As soon as 2 Chainz starts smiling, he becomes a global superstar. So my thing is, I believe it's in all of us. I believe that, but the ones that make it are the ones that are like, okay, it's in me, but how do I show the world? Mm. I'm not doing nothing on a God show that I don't do in meetings every day. It ain't like I'm in, it ain't like I'm, uh, Mark, Mark, am I lying, Mark? Am I, am I lying, JoJo? Like, I'm not doing nothing here that I don't do every day. Right. I'm just, it's not like I get in here and I'm like, hey, everybody, this is Ray Daniels. And it's like, he don't talk like that. <laughs> Why are you talking like that? You know what I'm trying to say? I'm just being myself. But I'm being myself in a position that shines a light on it where it's okay. Mm-hmm. So my thing is that I believe it's in all of us. But I believe the ones that honor it, that can pull it out of themselves, or have an Ian Burke or a Ray Daniels or a Janae or anybody who can say, let me show you how to right, pull it out of you. Right, right. But like when L.A. told me about, I put like this to Mira, if you look at every artist that was successful, music artists, the ones that were superstars were the ones that you could point out other things outside of music. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Tell you what I mean by that. I always say, you know you made it when someone can dress up like you for Halloween and people know it's that person, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So even if you wear a tank top, right, a Tommy Hilfiger tank top with a yeah. baggy shirt, you know who it is, right? Like, so when Rihanna cut her hair, Rihanna became that chick. Jay-Z, you know this. You're from New York. You know this. Mm-hmm. When Jay-Z dropped Reasonable Doubt, he had New York on smash. Everybody in New York was talking about him. This guy, Jay-Z, he's next. He did the record with Biggie, Jay-Z, Biggie Smalls, nigga, shit your drawers. Where mm-hmm. you from, Brooklyn? Nigga, Ho was that nigga. But it was when he did the, when he slowed it down, he did the, it's a hard knock life for us. And then we looked at him differently. Girls, and he ain't girls, looked back from girls, there. Girls, girls, yeah. It's in all of us. You just got to, that's why I, I want this platform. I just wanted to show people, you have to honor it. And the reason why it's not coming out of you is because you're mad. You're like, I'm dope as fuck. Well, if you're so dope, why aren't you rich yet, baby? You're dope as fuck. Why aren't you rich? Because dope motherfuckers that are dope as fuck are rich as fuck in my world. So, or they're on their way to being rich, right? Like this show, we haven't made a dollar from it, period. We actually in a hole from it. But you can't tell me it ain't dope. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know what I'm trying to say? The dope builds the, but the dope builds the value. The dope builds the value. But imagine if I started this show and the first thing I was thinking about is, Man, it can't be good. I ain't made no money. Mm-hmm. I don't let the world show me my value. Mm-hmm. I, I, sh- I tell myself my value, and every day I'm trying different shit Absolutely. to figure out how to make it pop. Absolutely. But I know this shit is dope. It's just packaging. So for me, I disagree. Can you tell him why I'm right? Please just tell him. Why I'm right. <laughs> I don't know. If he, I think he kind of went back on his word. <laughs> no, because, all right, 
People have goodness in them or something special. Woop, woop, I'll give you that. But superstardom, no. Everybody is not does not have stardom in them. So that's my point. And give me an example. Me, I'm not a superstar. I can't be Beyonce or Rihanna. I don't care who you put in this room. I don't have the stamina. See, I, see, I, see I, Ian, this is why this is why. But she, she, yeah, see, see, see you shot yourself in the foot with this. This is why she needs me. This is why she needs me. You did. You shot yourself in the foot. We were almost with you, sis. No, because you can. You are super. You didn't, Tamir. You and I didn't know we was gonna be sitting down doing this. We put a mic on. We ask questions, and then boom, it explodes. Your following has doubled since we started this, right? Yes. What does that tell you? That tells you that there are people who've seen you and said, I like this motherfucker right here. I want to support her. So just so because you're not Beyonce doesn't mean that you're not right, a that's star. A super, exactly. That's why I said everybody got something in them, but I ain't saying exactly. you don't, you, you don't know where this could potentially lead you. you somebody could be I'm watching this show. Somebody could be watching this show and say, you know what? I want to put her in my movie, Boom. in my next She's movie. A She's a star. You know I mean, guys have called me and been like, hey, bro. I'm in love with your clothes, man. She's gorgeous. And listen, like, when I watched the Jermaine show, I was like, oh, she's asking about me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she, who is this Ian Burke? Yeah. Who is this? I, yeah. don't, I don't know him. Who's exactly. this Ian Burke? Yeah. It's, uh, but that's what I'm saying, though. You have, but Tamara, you, the difference between you and Beyonce and Rihanna is that they honored the process and you don't feel like the process, you're worth it because you're not them. But you are. You just got to fucking honor it. And so if you, you just do, proved Beyonce, his Beyonce, point. Beyonce, Beyonce. You just proved his clap. point. Got clap. <laughs> <laughs> having a moment. Got but yeah, I, so I, I believe. But that's but that's, why, but that's why I'm asking bucks. Ian about the artist he signed because I'm like, bro, you've seen something. What is it that you've seen in these? What, what do you look for when you're looking at new acts? Like, what makes you say, I want to work with that artist? Ooh. It's. I've always been a fan of music, um, and I look for things that that would attract me to their artistry. If that makes any of sense course. at all. No, no, you, 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 you're, you're attached to the fan in you. Right. Mm -hmm. You're connected to the fan in you. And 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 that's the thing. When I came up, when I was growing up in Mount Vernon, uh, one of my favorite acts was the Commodores. I would sit back and read all the credits on the back of the, the albums while I was listening to their music. And the Commodores actually was my very first concert mm. ever in Radio City Music Hall with uh, Bob Marley and the Wheelers as their opening act. That was my very first concert. You saw Bob Marley live? I saw Bob Marley live. Yes, I sure did. I sure did. I certainly did. That's incredible. You know what I'm saying? So um, I have to be a fan. Like, I had this band back in the 90s called Edith's Wish. And, you know, I was managing them, and I had a seven or eight label bidding war on this particular act. And I wasn't in the back playing it cool or anything like that. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was always at every show. I was at front, in the front, singing every lyric at the top of my voice. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Because that was, I didn't give a fuck who was watching. I didn't care. L.A. was watching. Face was watching. Clive Davis was watching. Jimmy Iovine was watching. I didn't care. I'm up front singing every lick. That's a fan. Yeah. That's a real fan. So I'm, I, I'm always fan. I'm a, a the, 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 my artists are the people that I work with have to bring out the fan in me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And if, if I can't see that, then, and I have to be inspired. Mm. That's number one. I have to be inspired. If I'm not inspired to work with you, then, you know, it's like, eh, whatever. Eh. Why isn't there, like, a TLC of today? Can't, you can't duplicate that swag. It'll never be duplicated. I've had people come and tell me that they were going to put together a TLC, a new version of TLC. I mean, Lisa tried it with Black. Mm -hmm. And she did a That's very good, good job. Mm -hmm. She did a very good job. But couldn't duplicate TLC. It's just something about, you know... The swag, it wasn't the vocals. Like, Ray was right. It, they, I, it was not the vocals that pulled me in. You know, even though t Boss had that deep, rich vocal, you know what I'm saying, and, and Chili had, that, uh, had that, that high voice, but, you know, a lot of that stuff also was done with, with Deborah Killings. And not only that, I worked with TLC, and when they had, that was the first time I worked with artists who when they started breaking down the science of who TLC was, like, I'm, I'm just happy to be in the room at this point. Right. And I'm just, and when T-Boz is on the phone saying, we're women empowerment, but we're 
we're not this. And she started breaking down who they were. Like, we want women to feel like we don't need these niggas. These niggas need us. Mm -hmm. Like, man, like, so now, so that means when I was giving them songs, they might have been a song, like, I'm, I remember, you know the famous story about the song, uh, Where My Girl's At. Right. That was their song. Where My Girl's, Girl's At. Timberland, yeah, Tim, oh. Timberland, and remember Timberland bought it to L.A. Reid, Timberland and Missy. Okay. Bought it to L.A. Reid. L.A. was like, this was that, 702? Was that 702? 702. 702, yeah. And T-Boz, I, I don't know if it's been on record, but they kind of tell the story about it. They was like, L.A., you a, you a dick rider. You always want us to sing just because they got a hit. That ain't a TLC hit. Mm-hmm. That's how, so I always say, you know you found yourself when you can hear a hit and know that that ain't for me. Mm. Not hear a hit and be like, I could find my way in that. No, right. but hear a hit. And that's, and not that's, that's not TLC. That's, that's not, that's, that's, that's not my hit. Mm -hmm. My brand is not on that. So I would say that. So he's right though. I, I believe that, I believe that the reason why we don't have another TLC is because we don't have enough executive slash coaches like yourself that are in power because even me as a music executive, I, I never felt like I deserved to be in the room. That's why I sought to work for LA so bad. Cause I wanted someone, I wanted someone to fix me. It was just, you know, it's natural. You like, right. well, I'm not where I want to be. This guy's where he want to be. He must know what I don't know. And I sat in the room with him and I just wanted him to fix me. And then he started teaching me so many things. That's why I, the TLC thing, I just challenged him. I just was not afraid mm. to say, fuck that, this, this. I, it was really my way of like, was this? Because they're, they're, Tamir, unfortunately, Ian knows this. I would say 80% of the successful people in the music business are luck. 80%. Mm -hmm. Especially the music, especially the people behind the scenes. Usually, <laughs> it's just, they was there. They lived next door. They had the car. They was the guy in the room. You know what I mean? Like, you, you understand what I'm trying to say, I know right? exactly so, what you're saying. So there are some people I've gotten in the room with, and I was like, that's why I wanted you here. That's why I'm okay with him being an orator for the show, because I want people to be able to call him out. I want pe him to be able to decode things, because the decoding is where the greatness lies. So it's like, I don't want to, like, hack, hack the way we're thinking, but there were a lot of players who were 6'6", 220 pounds, like Michael Jordan, that mm -hmm. can dunk and that can shoot. There were a lot of players that had his ability, but there was only one that had his mentality, right. and that's what made him great. It's not your talent. It's not your ability that makes you great. It's your dedication to the process. To the craft. So there are, there are people right now who think they're not on because Ray Daniels won't give me a fucking shot. And they don't realize that it's not up to Ray. Nope. At the end of the day, it is not up to Ray. You know what I'm saying? Because if you if you truly got what it takes, whether you're an artist or someone behind the scenes, you're going to find a way to get in. One way or the other, and people are going to notice your work ethic. You want to know what you wanna know? What my, my thing is if I work with somebody, you know my number one thing is when I work with talent? Honest to God. It's my number one thing. It's me trying to guess. No, no, no. It's very easy. <laughs> My number one thing is I want to work with talent who I feel like is going to make it with or without me. Mm. That's who I want to be at the table with because I know that he's going to have to be his own engine and I'm going to have to be my own engine. But I, I want to know that no matter where I'm at in the world, this motherfucker is working. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Cause I, so I only want to work with people who I'm now. like, he's going to make it with or without me. Mm. I want to work with you. Not mm -hmm. somebody who I'm like, man, if he don't have me, he ain't going to make it. Mm -hmm. Because then that just means that it's another body for me to carry. And I don't want to carry more bodies. I want people around me who is like listening and applying. Like, dog, Ian probably don't remember Ray's meeting. I remember it. I remember where he was standing. I remember how he was talking to me. Because I wanted to be in this shit so bad that I was going, I'm watching how he move. Okay, that's how you move when you're in the room. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was dedicated to trying to be a great manager. Because I knew if I became a great manager that I can feed my family. Mm. So and that makes me want to ask you a question. What are three qualities you think someone has to have in order to be a great manager? Mm. Ooh. The, the ability to babysit. <laughs> <laughs> and Ray, you got to tell me if you agree with these qualities. Uh, you know, that, that's just, you have to have patience. Mm. Um, um, you have, and belief. You have to, to believe in 
the 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 excellence that you're working with. You have to understand, like we're they're not working for us; we're working for them. Like I, I tell everybody, it's like you're managing. If you're managing a McDonald's, you don't own that McDonald's. You understand what I'm saying? The McDonald's is the business, so the artist has to understand and recognize that they are the business. You understand? You hire a manager to to put things in place for you to make sure that your business is successful. You know, so the the ma- the manager hires the cashiers. The manager hires the people who cook the food. The manager hires the people that work the windows. The manager hires the people that cleans the floors. I, that handles your. I have a proposal for you. Oh, okay. I, I want to do it. I, I want to do an artist with you. Oh, okay. I'm. I'm, I'm that serious. No, I'm intrigued. I, I'm. A, I have. A, I have. A, I have. I have three concepts of artists that I want to do. And so they're, they're not physical artists yet. They're, they're just no, concepts. That's why I need to talk to you. Okay. Because I need a music guy. Well, you don't have anybody in mind. You no. Need to just I just have three mm-hmm. concepts that I'm like, man, that's missing in the game. Mm-hmm. And I know if I have the ability to make it with my team, I just don't have the time to do it all. So I'm, I want Ian to be my partner on it. I don't even want to talk about it online because I think it's so dope that if it's done, it doesn't lose. Mm. All right. You, you had me at together. hello. Let's go. We'll <laughs> you had me. We'll do something <laughs> together because I, I really got, I really got, because I believe this. Let me tell you why. Not to get off the subject, but I don't believe that people are missing. I don't believe that people don't want old shit that works. I, I don't believe that. Mm-hmm. Because if that was the case, then what Bruno Mars is doing wouldn't work. Bruno Mars is nothing but a reinvention of something that's already been done. Yeah. With Morris Day in the time and, you know, but it proves that there's still a there's still a a, a missing a, a missing link for artists like that. Right. So I'm I'm like a historian, so I always listen. I'm like, man, if somebody did that, that will work right now mm-hmm. because it's not done. That's why I was telling JT Money when I was talking to him, I was like, bro, like if the female JT Money came in and was like, shake what your mama can, yeah, shake what your mama, that should have worked, but it has to be a female, mm-hmm. right? So even with Bruno, it had to be someone who wasn't completely black because we're harder on each other. Right, you right. You know what I'm trying to say. No, no, I know exactly but what I you're have, saying. I have some artists that I want to put together that I'm going to see if we can find together, and I want to do it with you because – I just know it's missing, and I know I can make the records, and I know I can take them where they need to go. And that's right up my alley because TLC is nothing but a female version of Belle Biv DeVoe. You know I, that I, I, I fell in love Everybody, with, with the whole Belle Biv DeVoe concept. That's all it was. And I was like, if there's, if I create a female version of that, that would be so freaking awesome. And yeah. and and that's that's what I did. Ray, you want to play a game with him, or are you going to No, no, I, I, I go live. Well, I, well I think we're going to have Ian continuously come back. I okay, think we're going to so figure we're this gonna, out. We're going to spend this time. No, 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 no. We're going to play Put Your Money Where Your Money Where Your Mouth Is Now. Yes. Because we got, like, another four hours worth of shit, but he's going to be here more, so we're going to be able to talk. But, Ian, we yeah. have this Ooh, game yeah. you know we play it? called I know about Put this. Your Money Where Your Mouth Is. Yeah. And who better than Ian Burke I know. to decide who he's going to sign, who he's going to drop, and who he's going to deliver? And if you don't want to answer, all you have to do is donate 20 measly bucks $20. to, a, to a, a fund for kids. It's a music program for kids called the Creative Academy. Uh, we'll put the, the, the cash up at the bottom of the screen in case anybody's watching this, they want to be a part of it. But Ian Burke. Yes, sir. Are you ready? I'm ready. To Burke play. Records. I'm you ready. President and CEO. Yes. Of this, of this company. Of this company. And you have to, you have to. To come up with some, hold on, I'm, I'm looking for my list right we now. Gotta figure out who you're going to sign, drop, and develop. So your credentials, however you want to look at it, if you want to look at it from their peak, if you want to just go by hits, totally up to you. But you have to sign somebody, drop somebody, and develop them. All right, let's go. I'm Got ready. It. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Where do I start? Jodeci, mm. Boys the Men, Drew Hill. Oh, okay. Uh, I was signed, Boys to Men, I developed right. Jodeci, dropped Drew Hill. Now, this is why Ian should be running a company. <laughs> because when you run a company, you can't play with it. Mm-mm. And you know that. Exactly. That's why you answered 
so straight up. That was just so like nah, you we just gone. went straight. Like I got tears in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what would I, what would Ooh, I, I think. Listen, I think we're gonna get the kids some food tomorrow. Okay, let's see. Some burgers. TLC. Uh-oh. Destiny's Child Escape. <laughs> Oh wow! Oh wow! Oh yeah, no, no, twenty dollars. Kids get twenty dollars. Everybody, everybody, kids get twenty dollars. All right, cool. cool. (laughs) Ti, Jeezy, Ludacris. Uh, I would sign Ti. Uh, I would develop um. Luda, and drop Jeezy. Wait, okay. why are you dropping, and why are you signing, and why are you just... Uh, T.I. is, uh, well, you know, that... I love the, the career. He hasn't made some of the best choices, but I loved his career trajectory. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, I've known T.I. I signed T.I. to ASCAP when he was first getting started through Kawan Prather. Mm. Shout out so, to the legend, KP. Absolutely. Um... Uh, so I'm, I'm, you know, really folk. I, w- I would really focus on T.I. I would definitely sign him. Luda, I think, is a giant also. Um, and I love the trajectory of his career. Jeezy is great. Mm-hmm. No, no disrespect to Jeezy, but you know, this might not be your brand. That not my brand. I love how everybody looks at it differently in their thought process when they're picking based on what they do in the business. That's why. I All right, I got mm-hmm. a fun one for you. This is a fun yeah. one. Outcast. <laughs> Migos, Lil John and East Side Boys. Oh, that's easy. I'd sign our cast, uh, develop Lil John and the East Side Boys, and drop Migos. Oh, I love it. I just love it. I'm sorry, you know, now see, because he's looking. I she's love over it. here. I love it. She's over I love it. <laughs> I just want to know what Little John and the East Side Boys got over the Migos. I, listen, they created a genre. genre. Yeah. Created that John. said the same exact thing. Bro, <laughs> bro, Lil John and the East Side Boys are probably the most underrated rap group in history. They crunk music with, man, they had, they had their own they, energy they, they drink. Brought, they brought rock to, to the South. Right. And you know what's crazy? I was thinking about being marketable, and that that's a good one. They 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 took it to different levels. Mm-hmm. They had energy drinks. You said uh, they look, Dave Chappelle. Rock. Dave Chappelle made him an icon. Yeah. yeah Come on, yeah, bro. Yeah. Come on now. You know, no disrespect to the Migos. I respect what they did for the culture later on. And once again, it doesn't align with what I would do. I see. So, I, so I'm, I'm going to give a harder one for you right now. A okay. little harder one. Okay. Chris Brown. Usher, and we're not talking about <laughs> the atonement. We're not talking about what they went through afterwards. We don't have hindsight. Oh, I know. Yeah, they're in your office now, <laughs> and we got to make a decision. Right. We got Chris Brown, <laughs> Usher, <laughs> and, and R. Kelly. R. Kelly. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, I would sign Usher. Uh, I would develop R. Kelly and try to get him into another. That's actually you know what I'm answer. saying, and I would not. I would drop Chris. Tamir, do you want some? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see <laughs> just, he's rolling her eyes. Chris, Chris like, whatever, dance. like she, he can act and like. Chris, come I, on, I, I, I can't. I'm copy real with you. I don't think there since 1991, 1990, there hasn't been a better songwriter ever. R. Kelly. R. Kelly writes the crap out of songs. R. All Kelly the found other stuff. 150 ways, Tamira, to talk about okay, sex. Honey Did love. Yeah. Fucking remote control. Well, doesn't that sex make in the like kitchen. One, one dynamic? No, no because no. then he can I believe I can fly. He bought, right? Oh, okay, okay. And, he, and he sang he Sadie, even though that was a... Uh, what song? Sadie. 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 Yeah, yeah, that he, was a cover he, record. He wrote, he wrote You Are Not Alone for Michael Jackson. Right, and he brought back the Isley Brothers. And... and he brought back, I forgot, he brought, he back, brought the Isley, back the Isley Brothers. And I'm sorry. he wrote, uh, I Believe I Can Fly. I Believe I Can Fly is one of the best songs ever written. I Believe I Can Fly, I Believe I Can Touch the Sky. Think about it every night and day. Like, bro, you cannot take away. He can't take away and, his And his, the only reason why I could, I could justify, because I'm not going to answer the question, but I could justify Usher over Chris Brown. <laughs> Hit me out real quick. Because Chris Brown is more talented than Usher. 
more talented. I agree. But Usher is more dedicated to the process. I think Usher has to the, to the to the to, craft. To, to, uh, Usher's d- dedicated more to the craft. Chris Brown has felt rejection from the world, which has turned him oh, oh, off from playing the world's game. Usher is, he is never, like, even if you go see Usher right now in Vegas, which I recommend everybody do, you're seeing black excellence at its finest. And not, not having to worry about the drugs or the, the beating up women or, or what have you. Uh, and that's the type of stuff that doesn't align with my label. The audacity. You know what? I'm not, I'm like, you know what? <laughs> This is like Look at my Lakers. face. Because you, know, you know why? It's hey, that's how I need an order here. I need that uncle in the room that's not afraid to say, girl, you're getting fat. But that's not they trying to be nice to you. It ain't happy weight. You're getting fat, girl. You need to lose weight. You go to gym. No, I don't give a fuck what your husband say to you. Being a sexual assaulted or beating females, they're both, we can't, we said we were taking that part out of it. So we got to no, do that. Yeah, you know. But, but we, listen, we to, listen to Mira. That. Hold on, can we do this? You answer the question. Oh, yeah, no, I, I don't like, I'm not a fan. I can't separate the art. I have a very so big So you're not going to separate. So, I don't, I okay, can't. So, so you'd be feeding the kids. I would, no, I would, R. Kelly's out of here. He got to go and he's out of here. <laughs> Chris, though, the only issue I have with Chris is that I think he still be hitting his girls nowadays. Okay, well, then, well, well that's well, 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 I don't know. What do you want me to do, Tamara? If he learned his lesson, <laughs> then, like, we could move on. Like, that's why I would say we got to. Uh, uh, what I want to say is that the game was easy for Usher to love. The hardest thing that Usher went through in his career was when he married Tamika and people didn't really like his wife. Besides that, Usher has had love the whole time in the industry. Chris Brown still loves a game uh, industry that hates him, won't let him get rid of his past. He still puts out music, dope music, dope videos, goes on crazy tour. What are you got, Googling? No, no, I got, I got to oh, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I I want to get back to Ian uh, uh, answering a okay. question. I like where you at though. Okay. I like that. All right, Ian, Doja Cat, wondering. Nicki Minaj, Cardi B. I feel like I know his answers because he's a purist. I got two more after this. Cardi okay. Me and records. Wow. I'm trying to make it make sense. Are we oh, gonna so we give the kids? Out. Are the kids gonna eat? Yeah, the kids are gonna. Forty dollars for the kids so far. Yeah, 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 it was 40 for the kid. Uh, All right, I'm going to make it. It's going to be a little harder. I'm, I'm actually going to swear a lot easier because I, I personally want to hear your opinion on this. Okay. Summer Walker says a her. Oh, okay. I would definitely sign her. Mm. Um, I would develop uh, Scissor and Summer. See ya. Okay. Got to go. Okay, cool. Two more. Two more. I, I want to make sure I give him good ones because I, I know he's a purist. Uh... Okay, cool. Mariah Carey, Tony Braxton, Whitney Houston. Okay, three. Y'all hungry? Kids hungry? Sixty dollars for the kids, everybody. Kids hungry. Kids hungry. Kids out the sixty bucks, everybody. Kids hungry. All right, la- last one. Uh, last one. It's so crazy because I got like fifty. And I kind of want just me and him to talk. I just want to hear his thoughts. Cause, but I'm going to ask the last one because I don't want to make it feel like I'm trying to make money off of my money. <laughs> this, is just, this is really just trying to make sure where well, you got to answer it or lose something. All right, last one. Jay-Z, Kanye, Drake. Oh, uh, Jay-Z, Kanye. Uh, you've heard this answer before. Drake, sign, develop, Jay-Z, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's See ya. No, no, God damn, I, I, God damn you microphone not no, not in front. That answer was so bad. He went for the but microphone. If Drake yeah, came yeah. in front of you. What would like imagine like young Drake coming in front of you? Like what would Drake had Kanye, the, young Kanye next to young Drake? You know what I'm saying? My my whole thing is look, Ye and in, in my in my opinion, Ye is definitely a genius. He is, but he's just too off kilter for my particular brand. I'm sorry. See, I respect. And that. see, that's why I like. That's why I like it. I like. I, because we get back to the facts. We're not being emotional. It's just sometimes, Tamir, you have to decide what devil you want to lay with and what devil you're going to feel comfortable sleeping at night. I would personally pick Kanye over everybody. Okay. But 
that's just because I just don't think nobody is better than him in history outside of maybe Michael. I mean, this man in was playing. Opinion. He was playing records. I watched the the TV show Genius. He was playing records that nobody ever heard that we know now what monster hits. He was trying to tell these people, look, I got hit records, and nobody was hearing him. Nobody was paying attention to him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I met Ye, you know, at, at one point in time, and, you know, he's always been, at that point in time, a good kid. But, you know, when, when you start swaggering and, you know, you put on a MAGA hat and, and you start doing these type of things that are against what I feel or what I believe – then it's, it's time for that. I, I don't want to deal with that. I really don't. I don't care how much of a genius you are. If you were his manager, what would you tell him to do next? Uh, we'd probably part ways right now. <laughs> by then. You know what? I'm just going to be real. But that's what I said. But, 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 but you sticking to your brand. You know that's, nah, it. that's It's a hit, but I don't got That's my point. Mm-hmm. That's the, that shit is a hit. But I don't It ain't it. for me. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. All right. So we have this part of the show, Ian, we call Credit Check. Mm-hmm. Where uh, which as was inspired by you because to me you are one of the most unsung heroes of black music, and you know when we was talking to Jermaine Dupri, he shouted you out, and I saw you sharing it, and I was like, man, like that's what this is about. But I didn't, I don't like the concept of flowers though, right? Because flowers means I'm dead. This is credit check. Got it. I want you to give us two or three names that have helped you along your journey, unsung heroes that you feel like, man, I want to just give that person a shout. Okay. Because they played a huge role or, or, or a role that they didn't know was huge, whatever it is, by your criteria. Okay. Well, I'm going to start off with Deborah Killings. Um, mm. Deborah Killings is a, do you know who Deborah Killings is? Is she like a vocal producer? Vocal yeah, she's, she's a singer. Tra- yeah, she's she was a, a singer first, right? Singer first. Yep. She was signed to MC Records. She was in a band called Princess of Starbreeze. But if all the, the singing voices that you hear on Outcast Records, mm-hmm. most of that, like 99.9% of the, those vocals are Deborah Killings. Um, uh, Boys to Men, ABC, Tony Braxton. She was the, she is the voice of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. She's also a musician. Um, she's toured with Lionel Richie. Uh, she's toured with Outcast. She's toured with Big Boy. Um, she's just an all-around talent that, you know, is, is faceless to most. You know what I'm saying? But I, I um, she was one of the bands that I did uh, roadie work for back in the 80s. Um, she began her career, and then later on, during my ASCAP days, I became her manager and uh, got her signed to Verity Records. We did a gospel project with Verity Jive Records. Um, so she Deborah is Killings. definitely, Deborah Killings is, is, is one. Um, Michael Malden. Mm. I, I don't feel like Michael Malden he gets doesn't. his just due. Yeah, that's Jermaine Dupri's father. D- Jermaine Dupri's father. Um, uh, when I brought Michael Arrested Development to take over management, um, he rewarded me by getting me my first true industry job at Ichiban Records, where I broke a, a small record, the summer of 91, uh, called Ain't No Future in Your Frontin'. Yes. With MC Bree. MC Bree. Yes. So, um, you know, Mike and I have known each other for a long period of time, you know, especially because I'm close with his son. Um, and he, he's done a lot for the industry. He, he ran Columbia Records for a while, um, signed um, uh, Destiny Shaw and, and Dion Ferris. Um, so, yeah, Michael Malden would be one. One more. Um, for me, it's a tie because uh, mm. I can go, I can do this all day. Well, you're going to be here more, so we're right. going to have plenty of time. It's a tie. Um, the first one is K. Wells. Sh- bro, shout out to Kevin Wells, bro. Kevin Wells. He's a real, bro, he's another, m- uh, another giant that this city stood on the shoulders of. And, and nobody knows who he is. And, and, and I, you got to know him because he was supposed to be the puff of Atlanta. Like that's what he was known as. Like he had the he, first big he deal. signed, yeah, he signed ABC. Yep. He got one twelve signed. He signed the the group uh B five. Yep. Uh he was responsible for Monica. You know what I'm saying? So he's another one of those faceless people here. And and you know, we've definitely we've been at odds because we did the same thing. You know what I'm saying? But I'll never take his credit away from him. Yeah. I'll and never he, take his world, credit for him. Free World. Him. What was the name of his company again? Free World. Well, with Dallas Austin, was, uh, what did he, was he it was with like, Free World? No, no. It was, what was the name of his company? Um, 
I, I can't. It was. I it was. Uh, well, K Wells. I got. I got to get him on the show. That's bro. Yeah. The show. Yep. Who's the tie with? Uh, Quan Prather. KP. You know, KP is a, is another one of those silent giants. You know, um, Ti. Um, uh, eighty four is the Young Bloods. Shit. Uh, Usher eighty seven on one album. Exactly. TLC. He was yep. in all of that. He was in the midst of all of that. His, PA, his ghetto ghetto vision. Dungeon he, family. He exactly. Was a dungeon family he was affiliate. a original member of the Dungeon yeah, family. Yeah. And he's the one who got me out of jail to bring me over to the dungeon. Oh wow. Yeah, because I, I didn't notice at the time, but he had evidently he had a, one of those. What do you call a Bond company. Yeah. He bonded me out of jail. Oh, wow. And brought me over to the Dungeon family uh, to have that meeting about representing the guys. Well, so. I'm a, I just want to say, I'm going to give Ian Burke credit. Ray Daniels is. You are a giant from the city. Uh, if you are in Atlanta, you should know him. If you, like, and if we, we all should surround him and make sure that we support him in whatever endeavor he's doing because... We wouldn't have the Atlanta scene without you. And I'm just going to say that while you're sitting here. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. Clap for him. Let's clap for the black man. I love that. I love that. I, I ain't going to lie. I know we got to rap. I know. I, I just got to ask one question because he's here. Did you know Outkast was going to be as big as they no. was? No. And let, let me tell you, once again, this is Rico Way just pulling the strings because he was like, okay, you're, you're managing us, so... You're also going to manage Outkast. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like, oh, I want to manage these guys. It yeah. wasn't like that. Yeah. You know, it was like, okay, I was appointed as their manager by yeah. Rico Wade and and the rest of Organized Noise co-signed it. Yeah. You know, I did not know that they were going to grow to be the, like, the number one hip-hop group. Of all times. Of all times. Period. You know what I'm saying? So and you, so, so, you, so it was nothing different about them to you? Mm -mm. Like, they you know were, they just, No, yeah, no, I it, get it. They were just a couple of boys that could rap. But see, what it was, was Organized Noise mold, had to mold them. Yeah. Like, we were in the studio. Like, we were at Boss Town. Stink on you now. Yeah. It was Boss Town back then. Sleeping on the floors and stuff like that. Crafting this album after Players Ball blew yeah. up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was the Organized Noise that, that the, the, the lessons that Organized Noise taught them during that time that turned them into this machine. Mm -hmm. That no one else had ever seen before, yeah, and that's what made them different, Got you know. You. But coming up to to the the salon where uh, Rico Wade worked, yeah, and they're running and they're rapping and stuff like that. They were just two kids that you know had lyrical skills, but I would have never guessed that they would have become what they actually became today. That's all I want to ask. I just, I just, because I, 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 they came out when I was in ninth grade, mm -hmm. and I knew that they was gonna be that big, like. Everybody was dressed like Andre with the Kango and the jersey. It was just, I, it was just, but we didn't, I, we, I didn't know that they were going to be maybe 10 million sold, mm -hmm. but I, I've never seen one place have such an affinity for one artist. And, and, and it, it would, their audience grew with every record. The audience continued to grow. Never seen nothing like that in my life where like, to me, you from New York. I'm pretty sure there are places where you might go in New York where they don't love Jay-Z. <laughs> I'm asking. No, not really. So you don't think... I people, believe Jay-Z is like... The, the I know, but I'm saying, I know there's some people from Harlem. Oh, yeah, you know. I got, I got, I got a, one of the producers of the show is from Queens, and he will yell Queens over everything and 50 Cent over everybody. My point is this, is that I don't think that no city has more love for one artist than Atlanta has for Outkast. Oh, that's a good one. Take more pride in one artist. Absolutely. Like I feel I like I sung an Outkast song. I know, but, I, but so I'm saying I feel I feel like like I feel like like I feel like if we had a vote, which we did, <laughs> if, if, yeah. If Outkast is the only artist from the city of Atlanta that everybody would be okay coming after. hundred percent. Like whether you Future, whether you Migos, whoever you are, I feel like you'll be like I'm behind them. I'm cool with that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I said I don't think there's another place. You wouldn't take number two to anybody outcast. See what I'm trying to say? But I mean, I'm pretty sure some people in New York still argue Biggie, Jay-Z, and Nas. Right? Mm -hmm. Nobody argues outcasts. Okay, I hear you. Anybody else. It's right. Like, Understood. Don't even put them, don't even, don't even put them in. Undisputed champion. Undisputed champion. Yeah. But, Tamir, I know you got the last question. All right. So we are going to have you back a bunch of times. But before you go, I do have to ask you, do you consider yourself a GOAT or underdog? I'm GOAT. 
All right, and tell me why. I know you are. We know you are. Fucking all. right. Yeah, and we're we going to show the world. Goat. This is going to be the start of it. This right. show is going to be the start of Ian walking into his goat status. Yeah. That is the goal of the God show. We're going to show you how powerful <laughs> this show is. we taking right. him into his goat <laughs> status. I did, look, I've always felt like nobody could do it better mm. than I did. No one has a better eye for talent. No one can develop like I can develop. You know what I'm saying? And I felt like if, if given the opportunity, I would have proved that over and over and over again. Well, guess what we about to do? We're going to put it together, me and you. All right, there it is. I, I got it on record. I'm a man of my word. We're going to make something happen. My brother, I got to tell you, we thank you for being on the show. We celebrate you. I have, I, when I was coming up, you were a giant, and you were a gentle giant, which always made me feel like if he can be that way, then I can't be no other way. That's why I'm so nice to people, because of people like yourself. So I want to tell you, we love you, my brother, and I want to thank you for being on The God Show. Let's everybody get up for Ian Burke. Woo! Thank you.